Our learning targets for today are I can estimate to determine solutions to mathematical and real world problems involving multiplication or division, 5.3a, and I can solve for products of decimals to the hundreds, including situations involving money, using strategies based on place value understandings, properties of operations, and the relationship to the multiplication of whole numbers, 5.3e. What are some ways to estimate products with decimals? Think about this question during the lesson. A planner for a wedding needs to buy 16 pounds of sliced cheddar cheese. About how much will the cheese cost? Let's find out. What operation will you use to find the total cost of the cheese? To find the total cost of the cheese, you will multiply. Do you need to find an exact answer or an estimate? How do you know? No. You need to find an estimate because the question asks about how much. Why might the planner need an estimate? To quickly determine if he or she has enough money to purchase cheese. How much does one pound of cheese cost? One pound of cheese costs two dollars and fifteen cents. How many pounds of cheese does the wedding planner need? The wedding planner needs 16 pounds of cheese. One way to estimate and solve this problem is to round each number to the greatest place that has a non-zero digit. How do you round a number to the greatest place? Find the greatest place. Look at the digit to the right. If the digit is five or more, increase the digit in the greatest place by one. Then change all other digits after the greatest place to zero. If the digit to the right of the greatest place is four or less, do not change the digit in the greatest place. Then change all other digits after the greatest place to zero. Based on this rule, the amount of $2.15 will round to $2 and the 16 pounds will round to 20 pounds. Why can you omit the zeros to the right of the decimal point in $2? Since $2 is an exact amount in dollars, you may omit the zeros for the cents because there are no cents. The estimated product is 40, so the cheese will cost a total of about $40. Another way to solve this problem is to use compatible numbers that you can multiply mentally. Think about what compatible numbers you could use. You could use $2 and 15, which are easy to multiply mentally. What is the product? Before solving the problem, why is 16 changed to 15 and not 20? Because you can calculate with 15 easily. And since 15 is closer to 16, you will have an estimation that is closer to the exact product. The product of 2 and 15 is 30. The cheese will cost a total of about $30. What does finding the two estimates mean in relation to the total cost of the cheese? Finding the two different estimates gives you an idea about the actual cost of the cheese which will be between $30 and $40. Now, suppose one of the whole numbers was easy to work with. What would you do then? You would use that number and change those numbers that are not easy to work with. Now you know how to estimate the product of a whole number and a decimal. Let's take a closer look to what they were saying on the video. One way to estimate a product is to round each number to the greatest place that has a non-zero digit. We have this example right here of 3.68 times 19. So we have a number line drawn out and we have our, our number placed between the three and the four. Is the number closer to the three or is it closer to the four? It is closer to the four. 
also if you use our rounding rules, we would look to the number that has the greatest place that has a non-zero digit, which would be a three, and we would look to the number to the right of it to see what we are going to do. Remember from our rounding rules that if we have one through four, the number would stay the same, and if we have five through nine, we would move up a number. So we would adjust the 3.68 to a four. Now we have 19 over here, also placed on the number line for us. Is the 19 closer to the 10 or is it closer to the 20? It's gonna be closer to the 20. So we're going to go ahead and round that to 20. Also looking at our number that is in the greatest place would be this one. And we would look at the nine, which tells us to round up also. So now we're gonna go ahead and multiply 20 times four. We know that four times two is eight, and then we can just place our zero. The video also talked about compatible numbers, and compatible numbers are numbers that are close in value to the actual numbers and are easy to add, subtract, multiply, or divide mentally. So in this example right here, we have 24.8, which a compatible number for that is 25. Then we have times 4.21, and a compatible number for that would be four. So now we're multiplying two easy numbers, 25 times four, which is 100. So what is the product of 25 times four? 100. Teachers, you can go ahead and pause your video to allow your students to copy this information into their journals. Let's go ahead and practice some estimating. We're going to use rounding or compatible numbers to estimate the products of these two problems. So problem number one is 0 0.87 times 112. Remember that we're looking for the digit in the greatest value that is non-zero. So in this case, it would be the number eight. And we're gonna go ahead and look at the seven to see what we need to do for our rounding. Well, seven is part of the five through nine that means we're moving up, so we can change our decimal to 0 0.90, because this would be a moved up to a nine, or just times 0.9. So we have 112. The greatest place value of the non-zero is the one in the 100s place. So we'll look here at the one in the tens, and this indicates that it's going to stay the same, and these numbers are going to turn into zeros. So if we multiply this together, We get 90. Looking at number two, we have 104, and we can use compatible numbers with this one. 104, we can just go ahead and round to 100 times 33. 33 is closer to 30, so I'm just going to go ahead and change that to 30, and then I'd multiply those two together to get 30. Let's practice two more problems. We have 1.67 times four and 12 times 0 0.37. Let's go ahead and look at the first one over here. So our number that is in the greatest place value that's non-zero is going to be the number one right here. And we have a six that we're looking at to do our rounding. Six indicates that we're gonna go ahead and move up. So we can change 1.67 to a two. And then two times four is easy to do and our answer would be eight. Looking at this problem right here, we have 12 times 0 0.37. So we're gonna look at the digit that is in the highest place value that's non-zero. So we are going to look at the three, and we're going to use the seven to figure out what we need to do with the seven. So now we're gonna go ahead and round that to 0 0.4 because the seven indicates that we're moving up on the three. And we can look at this 12. Looking over here, this is the largest, the greatest place value. We're gonna look here at the two, and that indicates that it's going to go ahead and stay the same. This drops down to a zero. So then we would have 10 times 0 0.40, which would equal four.